the title of today's message is uh, How to Thrive in the Prisons of Life and I'd like you to turn to Genesis 39 Genesis 39 verses 20 to 23 Genesis 39 verses 20 to 23 29 20 uh, 20 to 23 so Joseph's master took him and put him into the jail the place where the king's prisoners were confined and he was there in the jail but the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's charge all the prisoners who were in the jail, so that whatever was done there, he was responsible for that. The chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made to prosper. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, we're all familiar with this section. Joseph, the favored son, Amen. Jacob's favored son, is now thrown into prison. He's thrown into prison. And uh, yet, we also read that uh, the Lord gave him favor. The Lord gave him favor. And, uh, you know, this is one of the most remarkable stories we find in the Bible. And we have so much to learn. We have so much to learn from the life of Joseph. So Joseph is at one of the lowest moments of his entire life, right? We know that he was the, the most valued son. He was the most precious son, right? And from then, from there, his brothers betrayed him. He was sold. He got a job in Pontifer's, Pontifer's house there again. He was, uh, you know, his, his wife lays his eyes on him and uh, he gets kicked out of there. He's thrown into prison. And uh, oh, we know all this, right? Yeah. And Joseph has come here into prison. The lowest moment in his young life. He's a young boy after all. He's, he's not an elderly man. He's a young boy. And uh, uh, Joseph is here. He has been, his own brothers have betrayed him. He tried, he remained faithful to God. He tried to do his job in Pontifer's house to the best of his ability. But there again, he's, uh, you know, he's, uh, let, he's, he's let down, he's betrayed. And now he's ended up in jail. Now it's in this Egyptian prison that Joseph learned some very valuable lessons. And those are the lessons that we're going to look at today. The lessons that he learned in this prison. Uh, now Joseph, uh, we need to remember, was not the only person in the Bible to go through a prison experience. Many of the great men in the Bible have found themselves in prison. Samson, Daniel, Jeremiah, Hosea, John the Baptist, John, Peter, Paul, Silas, all these men, all these men have been thrown into prison. So many of the Lord's greatest servants had to go through this prison experience yes. from time to time. Okay. They had to. And in each of these prison experiences, the Lord shows them His hand. Shows them His hand. Okay, now what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us? Because, uh, I mean, none of us, uh, I believe, have been thrown into prison. Yes. Uh, and we hope we won't go into prison. <laughs> But uh, this, as far as we're concerned, the Bible is talking about a different prison. Because we are in prisons in our own lives. We are living in prisons of our own making. Because our feelings, our relationships, our circumstances lead us into such a position that, that we feel, oh, I am trapped. I am trapped. Why is my life like this? Why are other people have this and I don't have 
this, you know, because we are, we end up living in prisons of our own making. And so that is where God speaks to each one of us. Okay? That's where God speaks to each one of us. And uh, so God puts us in a prison so that, uh, I like this line, you know, God uh, doesn't put us in a prison to defeat us. God puts us in a prison so that we might learn to thrive in His work and for His glory. Not survive. God doesn't want us just to survive. God wants us to thrive. God wants us to thrive. So God puts us through these prison experiences so that we can thrive because we don't we don't see the thriving we can't understand the thriving but God has a perfect plan God has a perfect plan and uh, that's what we're going to look at now and first of all you know the prison we know is a praise place of oppression prison is a place of oppression whether it's a physical prison or it's a prison of my mind it's a place of oppression because you are trapped that's that's the whole thing about a prison. You are trapped. You're not free to move around. And uh, whether that's a government-made prison or it's a prison of my mind, it's the same. I feel trapped. I feel lost. I feel powerless. These are all the symptoms that we exhibit when we are going through a prison experience. Uh, so uh, he was bound in prison. And uh, it was a place of harshness and suffering. And uh, we, we can understand that because when we go through this, we did go through these experiences that we feel that, uh, uh, you know, God has left us, God doesn't care about us. Uh, it obviously is clear that we are going through a prison experience. That's why we feel that way. That's why we think that way. Uh, so, Now, it is, uh, this is an experience that all of us fear, but it is an experience that we must go through. These are not fun times. They're not fun times, but they are God's times to make us thrive. Because God doesn't want us just to survive. He wants us to thrive. Uh, now, in, uh, when, when we read about Joseph, what we read about Joseph is that God gave Joseph favor. Because, you know, God wasn't, uh, Joseph wasn't accusing God and saying, God, why have you left me? Why have you abandoned me? Why don't you care about me? He wasn't doing that. Yes. He wasn't doing that. He was faithful to God. And what happened? God gives him favor. <laughs> in the prison, in the prison, God gives him favor. God gives him favor. This is the first difference between the children of God and the rest of the world. The rest of the world, when we go through, and a backsliding Christian also, when we go through difficult experiences, we, we sink, we, we get depressed, we get angry, we get upset, but not Joseph, not Joseph. So this is the difference. A child of God will always remain close to God, thankful to God grateful to God even if there is nothing to be grateful about as far as the rest of the world is concerned the child of God will remain because the child of God knows this is temporary this is temporary all right so this is a precious lesson for us to understand so regardless of the oppression we are under at the moment God is still leading his children so this is the idea that David had when he penned Psalm 23. Remember Psalm 23? What a, what a blessing it is to so many millions of people who go through the, the stress and the strain of life that God cares for me. So David was going through the same experience. That's when he wrote this, the Psalm. This, such a famous Psalm. So even though there is oppression all around me, I am blessed by God himself. That's what David was saying. So the prison is a place of oppression the prison is a place of obscurity obscurity nobody knows where he is his own family doesn't know where he is nobody cares about the prisoners they're not important people prisoners are not important people they're not important to 
anybody. That's why they're thrown into prison, right? But they are important too. They are important. So we see how Joseph has been betrayed, you know, by his brothers, by, 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 the, by his place of employment. Betrayal at every step, and yet he's still faithful to So, uh, and uh, we all, I mean, we all remember the dreams that Joseph had, right? Remember when he was a young boy? He, he said, I saw a dream when my, when, uh, you know, all my, yeah, the, well, the stocks and, uh, the, yeah, the crops in the field. Two dreams, right? Two dreams in which he was the, the sun and the moon and everybody bowing before him. Yes. You know, this is, these are the dreams that he had as a kid. And those dreams alienated his brothers from him because they thought, how dare this little guy talk like this? How dare he talk like this? Even, even his own father, even his own father. So the little boy who saw those dreams is now, is now in this position. Amen. He's now in this position. So what could he be feeling? It, this is, uh, you know, you can, uh, we all know what self-pity is, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I know what self-pity is because I indulge in self-pity so many times. And Joseph had all the opportunity in the world to indulge in self-pity. No. He remained faithful to God. So, uh, the prisons of life can leave us leading, leave us full of self-pity, bitterness. They can. But it didn't happen in Joseph's case. It didn't happen in Joseph's case. So the devil uses such times, you know. Because the devil is behind such times and he uses such times to make us think, if God really cared about you, why are you going through this situation? And you trusted God, but you've got nothing but trouble. You know, this is what Satan says to us. And if we listen to him, he will tell us more he will tell us more because he is the master of lies he will keep on feeding us these lies but we don't see that happening with Joseph he is faithful to God so others may forget about us but God knows exactly where we are God knows exactly where we are exactly what our situation is God knows and that is enough and that is enough for us. Uh, as we read in Hebrews 4:15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations, but one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human in every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. That is our high priest. That is our high priest. He has gone through every experience that we have gone through. And uh, so... At lonely times, let us never think that God has forgotten about us. Because God will never forget about us. Because everybody goes through periods of depression. So many Bible, biblical giants, in from Elijah in the Old Testament. We know the depression that Elijah went through, that, that God has left me, God has forgotten about me. Yes. He was fleeing for his life from uh, Jezebel, right? And he was so depressed. He was so depressed. He wanted to die. Yes. We're talking about one of the giants of the Old Testament. So, this is the way Satan works. This is what Satan does in our lives. So, but we don't see that happening with Joseph. So, God knows where we are. God knows who we are. God knows this prison experience that we're going through. It may be a place of obscurity, but God will use it for His glory. If we remain faithful, God will use the most oppressive place, the most obscure place for His glory. That's, that is who He is. That is who Almighty God is. And uh, next, for someone who remains faithful to God, remains faithful through the, obs the obscurity and the oppression, then what happens? The prison becomes a place of opportunity. It's so only if you remain faithful through the obscurity and the oppression that it will become a place of opportunity. Amen. Praise God. So, and it was a place where Joseph learned these valuable lessons about God. Remember, the greatest opportunity is to learn more about God. It's not 
in his physical life. It's not in his surroundings. It is to learn about God. He learns about God's presence, about God's providence, about God's purposes, and about God's power. He learns all these things about Almighty God. His presence, His providence, His purposes, and His power. And uh, he learned these lessons which could not be learnt in any other way. Amen. You cannot learn these lessons when life is all right, when life is normal, when you are like other people. Yes. You cannot learn these lessons. You cannot. So one of the greatest blessings of going through the trials of life is the truths that we learn about God. In fact, the trials of life teach us what they teach us about God cannot be learned in any other way. They cannot be learned in any other way. Think of Daniel in the lion's den. Think of Daniel in the lion's den. He could not learn about God's power over the lions unless he was first cast into the lion's den. He couldn't learn about God's power over the lions unless he was thrown into the lion's den. The three Hebrews, the three Hebrew boys, who were thrown into the fire, they could, they could not know about God's power to deliver them from the fire until they had been cast into the furnace. The disciples would never have known that Jesus could still the storm until they found themselves in the midst of it. They had to be caught in the storm on the Sea of Galilee before they knew that Jesus can still the storm. Mary, Martha and Lazarus could never have understood that Jesus is the resurrection and the life unless Lazarus had died. And the multitudes would never have understood that Jesus could multiply the loaves and the fishes until they had, un unless they had all been hungry first. There were thousands of people there and Jesus used a, a little boy's meal Yes. to feed everybody so unless you were they were hungry there they would never have known what Jesus could do and the woman with the issue of blood could never have experienced the healing touch of Jesus without suffering the cost of her illness for so many years 20 years 12 years, 12 years she was suffering from this endless flow of blood and unless she had suffered that she would never know what Jesus could do so the list could go on. It's an endless list of people who have known what Jesus could do. And they have only known it because they were in the prison of life. That's the only reason they could know it. And then, so if we really understood our prisons, our opportunities, you know, when we really understand that uh, our prisons are opportunities we will stop asking God why we will stop asking God why 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 is this happening to me and you will start asking God what are you going to do with my life huh? well wow, that's wonderful isn't it if we reach a state like that when we can stop asking God why 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 is this happening to me and instead of that if we can say what are you going to do with, our life, with my life so that's that's what the prison that is what a prison experience should teach us and the prison is a place of uh, obedience. It's a place of obedience. Because we notice that even in prison, Joseph is always faithful. Joseph is always faithful. For him, it was just another place of service. You see, that's the way Joseph looks at the prison. He looks, as it, looks at it as a place of service. So as far as Joseph is concerned, the important thing is being able to serve God. Where the place is does not matter. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Where it is does not matter yes. whether it's in Pharaoh's palace or it's in the prison. Being able to serve God was all that. Amen. 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 So as far as Joseph was concerned, this is just another place where I can serve God. That's all that mattered. So this tells us a lot about this man called Joseph. He was a man of integrity who was going to remain faithful to the Lord despite his circumstances, despite his situation. So we don't find... Joseph sitting in his cell full of self-pity. He had, he had all the opportunity more than any one of us to indulge in self -pity. But that never happens. That never happens. 
And so God, God's will is that you and I should bloom where we are planted. God wants us to bloom where we are planted. Not, not in a different place. Where we are, that's where God is going to make us bloom. So regardless of the circumstances, of the problems, God is, uh, God wants us to remain faithful. Because when we are faithful, He will bless us. He will use us. You know, people have uh, all kinds of excuses. I mean, we, we all know about making excuses, right? I have made so many excuses. So God knows about people who make excuses because we can't serve God because of this or because of that, because of my family, because of my situation, because of my background, because of this, because of that. You know, so excuses are not important here because, they, because Joseph had all the excuses in the world. He had all the excuses in the world, but he remained faithful. And so some people say, you know, you don't know what I am going through. You don't know my experience. You don't know what I have experienced. None of that matters. Nobody has experienced what Joseph has experienced. And uh, all these are foolish statements. I like this. All these excuses that we make are foolish statements. Because each of us serves God to the degree we choose to. So our faithfulness to God is in our hands. We are the ones who decide how faithful I am going to be to. I'm the one who decides that. Not my circumstances, not my family. It is always I who decides that. So I can be as faithful as I choose to. If I want to find excuses, I can find plenty of excuses. But if I want to remain faithful, I can remain So God helps us all to learn the truth that God has us exactly where we are for His glory. God has us in our particular situation for His glory. We, have, we need to understand. If we are children of God, God knows each one of us and what each one of us is going through. So God has us in that situation for His glory. For His glory. And... Uh, God has a wonderful plan for everything. God has a wonderful plan for everything. Uh, so let's remember that uh, nothing in our life just happens. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens in the life of a Christian. Whatever happens in the life of a Christian, it is a part of a master plan. Amen. It is a part of the plan of the creator of the universe. Amen. It's not part of my plan or your plan. Amen. It's a part of the plan of the master of the universe. Amen. That's what happens in my life. There is no such thing as coincidence or something just happens. That's the way the world thinks. But that's not the way it is for us. God is in absolute control of our lives. Is an absolute control. All we need to do is remain faithful. That's all we need to do. So let us live our lives in submission to His will. In submission to His will. Faithfulness. So God's desire for each of our lives is that we should be faithful to Him every minute of the day, regardless of what we are going through. Because nothing that we are going through is happening without God's knowledge. Nothing that we are going to, through is happening without God's love. So, like uh, we read about Joseph, you know, as far as Joseph remained faithful, he wanted to serve God. The place was unimportant. Whether it was Pharaoh's palace or it was a prison, it made no difference. He just wanted to remain faithful. That's all he wanted to do. And we learned that the prison is a place of overcoming. It's a place of overcoming. He remained in prison for two years or maybe a little longer and God used him mightily because we read how the, end, how the, the, the manager of the prison himself, the manager of the prison entrusts Joseph with all, he entrusts a prisoner. So a prisoner is someone who is there against his will and in this case unjustly because he has done nothing wrong but still he 
trusts him to run the whole show, to run the whole thing. He trusts him completely. And finally, we read that Joseph is delivered from the prison. So in less than an hour, Joseph went from being a prisoner to becoming the prime minister Amen. of Egypt. In less than an hour. In less than an hour, he went from prisoner of Egypt to prime minister of Egypt. Amen. This is the way God works. This is the way God rewards those of us who remain faithful. So we need to understand that God uses the trials that Joseph experienced to prepare him for the place of service God had planned out for him. You know, because we look at our lives, we look at our surroundings, and we, in our small minds we think, how is God working? What is God doing? But God is preparing us for a greater position that he has for us in the future we cannot see that future but god can see that future and that's what jo god was doing in joseph's life that's what he was doing in joseph's life. and through all his trials joseph learned to have compassion on others uh, he learned administrative skills he learned obedience and he learned faithfulness this is what Joseph learned. This is what God was teaching him when he went through all these painful, humiliating experiences. He was learning compassion, administrative skills, obedience, and faithfulness. And we can see, when we look at the progression in the responsibilities that uh, Joseph got, we can see the progression. He was placed over an assignment. He was placed over a household. He was placed over a prison. He was placed over a nation. The first assignment, of course, is the assignment that his father gave him. Go and see what your brothers are doing, right? That was the assignment. Yes. Go and see what your brothers are doing. They've been away for such a long time. I don't know where they are. Please go and find out how things are and give them some of this stuff. That was the assignment. He was faithful. He was placed over a household. From there, he was betrayed by his brothers. He was, he was sold as a slave, but there he becomes head of a, of a household, Potiphar's household. Then he was placed over a prison, the prison administrator. And finally, he was placed over a nation. This is the way God worked in Joseph. So if Joseph wasn't well grounded in God, unless he was firmly until he knew he was firmly established in God he could never have risen to these heights he would have been like you or me you know just thinking oh I you know uh, my life has been unfortunate I have got the uh, I have all the bad luck right the most unfortunate uh, all the bad luck that, that's that's the way the world thinks and that is the way believers also sometimes so as we, uh, so he learned all the lessons as he needed to be able to flourish on the throne of Egypt. So, you know, Joseph flourished on the throne of Egypt. Why? Because he learned his lessons in the prisons of Egypt. That is why. That is why he was able to flourish on the throne because he learned his lesson in the prisons of Egypt. That's why Joseph was able to flourish. And so let us never rebel against the prisons that we find ourselves in. Because God is in control. We must live our lives and trust Him and, and know that He has a perfect purpose in everything. So. Let's ask ourselves, are, are we in a prison now or are we out of a prison? Because in our mind, you know, we can be in a prison or we can be out of a prison. Because we don't, we don't need to worry about the prisons of the government. Let's talk about the prisons of the mind. We can either be in a prison or out of a prison. Uh, and in either case, we need to remember what Joseph taught us. We need to look deep in our heart and know whether or not 
we are in the place of alignment with the plan and purposes of God for our lives. That's all we need to look at. Because the prisons are of our own making. So all we need to look at is, am I in alignment with God's plans for my life? That's the only thing that matters. That's the only thing that matters. That's the only responsibility I have. To see that I am in alignment with God's plans for my life. So, so am I blooming where God has planted me? Or am I struggling against the bonds that hold me? So am I struggling against my circumstances? Or am I blooming? Am I shining in my circumstances? These are questions that I need to ask myself. So this is the way God is. And so remember that a prison is a place of oppression. A prison is a place of obscurity. It's a place of opportunity and it's a place of obedience and it's a place of overcoming. So right in that prison, Joseph, you know, he overcame oppression and obscurity and opportunity and he uh, chose the opportunity and he chose the obedience and he was able to overcome whatever happened to him. So remember, God always wants us to thrive not just to survive god doesn't want us just to survive because everybody's talking about surviving right surviving covid surviving that surviving this god is not in the business of making us survive he wants us to thrive to shine Amen. and i need to ask myself is that what is happening in my life? 